Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini, and in this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to make my ribbed crochet dishcloth or washcloth, and I think you're gonna like it. All right, so here is the crocheted washcloth we'll be making. I wanted to give you an overview before we get into supplies and materials and right into making it so that you can understand how it comes together. So the project is started on one corner, then we work row by row like this from the corner this way. We're increasing stitches because it's getting wider and wider as we go. And then we start to decrease when we get to here so that we work it from one corner to the next. And here's a little sample of how that works on the smaller one that I'm working on. You can see I started on this opposite corner and I've been working my rows up to here. We work a couple of straight rows along this diagonal and then we start to decrease and you can see that I have a little bit left to go to basically finish off this little corner, okay? Now these ribbed lines that you see, this kind of textured rows, is because we'll be working in the back loop of our stitches and if you've never done that, don't worry, I'm walking you through every single step so that you too can have some successful results and make my washcloth. All right, then after it's all done, you can see that the edging here looks slightly different to this one because we do go back in and do a little single crochet border all the way around. You don't have to, because I mean, if it's just gonna be a washcloth or a dishcloth and you're fine with the way that this looks, then you're okay there too. But we do go in afterwards and finish it off with a single crochet border, all right? So now let's scoot this stuff out of the way. Let's go over the supplies and materials you'll need so we can jump into making our washcloth. For yarn, you're gonna want probably some type of a cotton yarn. Now I'm gonna be working with Premier Home here and I like this one. It has a little bit of polyester. It's 85% cotton, 15% polyester because I like to work, as you can see, with really bright colors. And the little bit of polyester uh, helps make this color fast so it's not just straight cotton because cotton we know the colors get muted over time with so much washing and drying, all right? You'll need a darning needle or some type of a yarn needle so you can weave in your ends once we're done making it, some type of scissors or snips, and then of course your crochet hooks. And this is a set that we sell in our online shop and I'll include a link in the description box below on where you can find it if you need to get your hands on this fun rainbow colored set, you can do that there, all right? So let's go ahead and grab yarn. I think I'm gonna use this color because it'll show up better for instructional purposes on camera. And we're gonna grab a crochet hook. Now when it comes to hook sizes for this pattern, of course, whatever yarn you're using, always just double check on the back of it what they recommend. All right, so, so this yarn label is recommending a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook or a US size I9. So my crochet set comes in metric, so I'm gonna grab the 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now, keep in mind that depending on the hook size that you use, that will yield you either a looser, more open fabric or a tighter, denser fabric, all right? And so on cotton washcloths, I don't like them to be super dense because then they take forever to dry. So you see how you can kind of see a little bit through the openings in there? That's kind of like what I like. This one is a little bit looser and more open, as you can probably tell. It's also a different yarn, so it's slightly different. It's not really a great side-by-side uh, -side comparison, but the more open, and by open I mean like the more holes you can see and the more open that the fabric itself is, obviously the bigger hook was used here. Now on this one, I'm using a five millimeter crochet hook, so it's slightly denser, like a little bit more tight, the fabric is, uh, than the one that's 5.5. So just keep that in mind, you don't always have to stick to what um, the yarn band label recommends. It just also is gonna depend on what you want. If you want something really, really dense, go with a smaller hook size. Not too small, but somewhere in the five to 6.5 millimeter in that range will yield you something that's totally usable. In this one, I also started using the five millimeter crochet hook. So the stitches are a little bit closer together. Obviously to make a larger one, you will need more yarn if you're using a smaller hook because your fabric is gonna be more dense. So you're using up more yarn and it's smaller at the same time. All right, so let's stick to 5.5 millimeter, and this is the brown one here. So we're gonna grab this, and we have our ball of yarn. All right, so leave yourself a tail to begin with, about six or six to eight inches is fine. Make yourself a slip knot here, and whatever your preferred method is fine, there's a ton of different ways to make a slip knot. I bring up that loop from the slip knot, and that's where I'm going to insert my crochet hook, and then I'm gonna start with the yarn that's coming from my ball here, I'm going to chain two. So there's one, and there's two. Now I'm gonna place this down so I can show you where you're going to insert your hook next. So now we're gonna start increasing because remember we started off on a corner 
and we need to work our way back and forth. But as you work away from this corner here, we need to be adding stitches, increasing the, the length of the rows that we'll be working. So to increase, this is going to be our first increase row. We're going to start with working three single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So what does that mean? If I'm holding this like this, one chain is there and the other chain is here. So I'm just going to insert it right in here. You can do it through the back loop, whatever you want, but let's try and keep it basic here for beginners. So we're just going to insert it through one of these legs and I'm going to do three single crochets. So I go through, I yarn over, yarn over, come through. That's one. I'm going to do two more just like that in the same spot. Two and three. And if you need a refresher on the slip knot, single crochet and all that, I'll include a link to another one of my tutorials where I walk you through the basic crochet stitches for beginners. That way you can use that as a reference. Okay. So we have worked three single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So now we basically have three stitches in this row and there's one I'm pointing out the V one, two and three stitches. Okay. So that's that row, all right? So now for row two, we're going to chain one first and then turn our work because now we need to work our way back this way. All right. Across the same row. So for row two, we did the chain one, we turned the work. Now we're going to be working in the back loops only. All right. So let me slip out my hook and show you what the back loop means. That means that when I'm looking at the stitches like this, and this is the V's of each of my stitch, the front loop is the leg of that V that's closest to my body. Okay. So this is closest to my body. That's the front. The one further away from my body, this one closest to my pointer finger on my left hand, this right here. So right where you see me going in, this is the back loop or the back leg of the stitch. That's where you'll be inserting your hook as we work these stitches and you'll be doing that across every row. So keep that in mind. We're always going to be going in here in the back loop of the stitch. So now I need to do two single crochets in the first single crochet. So this stitch here, although it is a V, it's not our first single crochet. Remember that's the chain that we just did before we turned. So don't insert your hook here. Instead, insert it here in the first single crochet. We only have three single crochets in this row. That last stitch you see here was the turning chain and you don't want to go in there. All right. So we're going to do two single crochets in the back loop of the first single crochet stitch. That's one. I'm going to insert it right in the same spot. And that's two. So I did those two. So two single crochet in the first single crochet. Then we're going to do one single crochet in each of the next single crochets until we get to the last one. So let's see if we only have three, I just did two in the first one. That means the next one is going to be this middle one in the back loop. Only I come up, I'm going to do this single crochet. And now the next one is my last one. So instead of just doing one there on the last single crochet of that row, we need to do two single crochet in it. And every time that we do two in something, obviously we're increasing. So that's one and this is two. All right. So now you have five stitches and we'll double check and count to make sure. So we have one, two, three, four, and five is this last one here. Here we started three. Now we have five. Okay. Now this is going to be row three. Now we need to again, chain one. That's our turning chain. You chain one first, then turn your work. And then we're going to work in the back loops only again. And that's the pattern. We're going to do two single crochet in the first single crochet of this row. So remember, skip the first V cause that is your turning chain. That's not a single crochet. So I'm going to come in here. And the first single crochet that you do on each row, you're going to do two single crochet in that one. That's where you add an increase. So we're increasing at the beginning and at the end of each row. So that then the next one, I just do one and you're going to do one single crochet in the back loop of each single crochet stitch until you get to the last one. Then, you know, the last one you need to increase again. So here's another one. And now I look and that is my last single crochet of that row. So I know I need to do two in that same stitch. So there's one and there's two. So now you should have seven stitches and we can stop and double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, straighten this out. And seven is that last little one right there. Okay. So that's how you start. That's row three. 
So for row four, we're going to chain one, turn the work and do the same thing. Okay. And you're going to keep doing this. So I skipped the first little bit here because that stitch is a turning chain. That's not a single crochet in the first single crochet. I'm going to work in or the first single crochet stitch. I'm working two single crochets. Then I'm going to do one in the back loops only every time one in each across until I get to the last one. And on the last one, do two in that last stitch. And we're going to do two in that one. All right. So now on this row, you can see how this whole thing is getting bigger and bigger, right? So on this row, you should have nine stitches and we can stop and double check. And that way you just double check to make sure that you're getting a handle on the pattern. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, so I do have nine. I know I haven't missed any increases. All right, so after you double check, we have nine stitches here. Then that means that you basically got the pattern down and we're going to repeat that exact same pattern. So row four, like we just did, where you turn, you do one chain, then you turn your work on the first single crochet, you work two, and this is on the back loops again. Then you work one single crochet in the back loop of each previous single crochet of the row beneath it, right? Till you get to the last one, then you work two more in there. And, and that is what is increasing it. Okay. By two stitches each row. Remember we went from three, five, then we had seven. Now we have nine stitches. So we're basically adding one extra at the beginning and at the end by doing two in one stitch and two in one stitch at the end. So I'm trying to walk you through. I know it's a lot of words, but it's important to kind of understand how this comes together. That will help you in this project and other crochet projects that you decide to tackle in the future as well. If you understand like what is going on and why you're doing it, what it does to the project, how you're increasing, all that stuff is super important. All right. So I'm going to keep working on this in the same pattern. Okay. And then I'm going to show you where you would stop. You decide how wide you want to go. And I have a little sample here. So this one I've been working on from the bottom here doing the same thing. And so we're going back and forth, back and forth, and it's the exact same pattern. You can keep going as big as you would like, obviously make sure that you have enough yarn to do that. But if I wanted to stop here, all right, and make a smaller one, just keep like this and you can like measure from here to here. Then you know that if you stop here and you start to decrease, okay, that is going to be the finished size of your washcloth, whatever this is mirrored over to the other side. So it's going to be like a little square like that. Okay. If you don't want that and you want it to be bigger then you would just keep working these increase rows until it's longer, wider, bigger, and then, you know, stop at the halfway diagonal to decrease. Now say I want to stop here. I've gone as far as I want to go. So now when we want to stop to start decreasing, you need to stop and work two rows just even meaning we're not going to be adding an extra stitch at the beginning or the end, or we're not going to be decreasing just yet. So we're just working the full length two rows. All right. So if I want to stop here and I've gotten to that point, the even rows are worked by chaining one, then turning your work and you're still just working in the back loops, but now you're only going to work one single crochet in each single crochet. So I skip this first loop here because that is my turning chain, right? Then I'm going to start with the back loop and I'm just going to do one single crochet in each all the way across the row. All right. So I'm to the end of that row. All right. That's one row that I work even. I need to work a second one. So again, I'm going to chain one, just turn and again, work one single crochet in each of the previous single crochets I just did and through the back loop only. All right. So from this point, we have started at the bottom, climbed all the way up to where we wanted our diagonal to be. Then we worked two rows even without increasing. All right. So now after you work those two rows, even we are now going to start the decrease. So I need to show you how to do the decrease. So row one of the decrease here, we're going to start off like we've been doing on all the others where we chain one and then turn our work. Okay. And then you're going to skip the first single crochet. So because we're not working a stitch in the first single crochet, that's going to be the decrease at the beginning. Remember the way that we increased adding an extra stitch at the beginning and at the end of each row. Now for the decreases, we're going to take away a stitch at the beginning and at the end of each row. And that is what balances it out and finishes it off in a square type shape. All right. So we're skipping the first single crochet. So for me, I know that this pink one here is not actually a single crochet. That's my turning chain. 
The yellow one you see here is the first single crochet. So I'm skipping that one. And then I'm gonna start by working in the back loops only, just like we have been, all right? And doing a single crochet in the next single crochet. So this was my turning chain. We skip that. The first yellow stitch you see here is the first single crochet. So we skip that. And I'm gonna go right in here to work a single crochet, the back loop of that next stitch. And I'm working a single crochet here. All right, then we're gonna do that same single crochet in the back loop of every stitch that we see until we get to the last two. Before you start working the last two stitches in the row, stop so I can, when I get there, I'll show you how to do a single crochet two together. So we're basically gonna be taking two stitches and turning them into one so that we can have that decreased stitch at the end of this row, right? At the beginning, we decreased by just skipping a stitch and starting on the one next to it. So then at the end, we need to decrease another stitch. All right, so we're working our way to the end. I'm going to adjust this so I can make sure I can see all my stitches. And I see that those three green stitches that you see there, those are three that are remaining. One, two, and three, okay? So I'm gonna do one single crochet in this one because I said I wanted to stop before I got to the last two stitches. So now these two stitches, I need to do a single crochet two together to turn these two, in case you can't see them, here's one and here is two. All right, these two, I need to stitch them together basically to decrease them into just one stitch. And to do that, we're going to insert the hook in the same way we were doing all the other ones in the next stitch, so the back loop for us. So insert the hook there, then I'm gonna yarn over, so grab yarn, and then I'm gonna pull it through. So I've pulled up a loop, I have now two on my hook. Then you're going to insert the hook in the next stitch which is here and in the back loop again. So now I've grabbed the last stitch. And you're gonna yarn over and pull through a loop. So now you have three loops on your hook and the final step to bring them all together is to yarn over and pull it through all three, okay? So we combined those two green stitches, one and two, all up in here to just end up with one stitch at the top. So that's how we do the decrease at the end of our row, all right? And then you're gonna continue following along with the instructions to continue decreasing. So you're just repeating that same pattern. You're chaining one, then turning your work. So then here I'm skipping, whoops, let me grab my pointer needle here. I'm skipping this first bit because I know that that was a turning chain. That's not a single crochet, okay? Then here is my single crochet, the first one, the, ye the second yellow stitch you see there, we're gonna skip it. And then I'm coming into the pink one to begin in the back loop. So I start here and then continue the same thing across. When you get to the last two stitches, work your single crochet two together. So I'm gonna continue working on here and then I'll meet you back here once we get all the way down, decreasing, decreasing until you end up with just three stitches left to work. All right, so I've gone on, continue with all my decreases, and now I have three stitches remaining here, so I stop. If you want to just go ahead and finish it, you can just um, basically fasten off and be done with it. But if you're following along with the free PDF instructions, then you'll notice that there is a section in the PDF for the border, okay? And so the border tells us that now at this point when you're going to stop, when you have three stitches left, right here, I'm going to chain one, and then it tells me to work single crochet evenly spaced all the way around the outer edge. You want to work three single crochet in each corner, all right? And then when I work my way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. And for the single crochets in the border, you basically, if you want to make sure that it's kind of evened up so you get the same number of single crochets along each side, what you can do is before you start is just kind of go through and see where you would easily be able to slip your hook in and then count across and then try to do that here and see if you're close to the number, okay? Because you can always fit in an extra one somewhere or take one off from the, the final number of the single crochets you do for the border. So for me, I think I'll probably go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then I would do three in this corner. So something like that. So if you do 17 along one side, and you can also count them as you go, then know that you have to do three single crochets in each corner. So you'll just do three in place, okay? And then you'll continue doing single crochets in here along this edge. So if you count 17 across this way, then do your three, and then make sure that you're counting, you know, 16 or 17 would be fine, but just something that it's even. You don't wanna have 17 across the top here and 25 on this edge either, okay? So keep that in mind. And that is just going to help give it a cleaner look on the edge. So I'll show y'all in this sample, especially if you're using the same yarn, you can see how it just gives it a more uh, kind of even look all the way around. All right, so that's up to you whether you wanna go ahead and, and uh, complete the border to add that extra step on, or if you just wanna be done with it when you get to the corner, okay? So I'm gonna keep working so I can start here and start doing my border and that way I can show you what it looks like with this multicolored yarn once I'm done. All right, so that is 17 across this edge and now I've come to the corner. So I'm just gonna go and I'm looking at kind of like the longest diagonal. So I think right here, I'm gonna do my three single crochet for this corner. One, two, three. And then we're gonna continue doing the same single crochets but along this edge next. Sixteen, seventeen, and I'm right up to the corner. So that's good. So I did seventeen and seventeen. And of course, that number of single crochets that you do for the border is going to vary based on the size of your washcloth. All right. So just do as I did and kind of estimate it, and then count as you go down each side to make sure that you're not adding way too many or too too few. All right. So we're coming here. Let me cinch this up since this is looks like where I started. Okay, so in this corner here, I'm gonna do three single crochet. And now I'm gonna work my way this way, trying to fit in again, another 17 single crochet here. And 17, perfect. I'm up to the next corner here, so I'll do three. And I only have one edge left to crochet. All right, so here's a quick look before I finish off the remaining edge here with the border You can see what the border looks like. It's a lot more of a polished look So if you like that make sure that you do this step of adding the single crochet border to everything It kind of helps anchor it down and makes everything look a little bit neater Versus this right here, which is fine too You know, it's just a matter of personal preference and really how much time you have if you're kind of in a hurry and you're giving this maybe to somebody who doesn't crochet, they probably won't know the difference either, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, finish off this last edge of the border, then I'll fasten off and I will grab my uh, yarn or darning needle and I'll show you how I weave in the ends. All right, so on this next corner, I'm going to work the three single crochet because this is the corner I started on and I didn't start off with the three single crochet. I just did a chain one and went right into my border. So I'm gonna do three on this corner too. And then I'm gonna join with a slip stitch in the first single crochet. I'm just gonna put it in this one here that's a little bit easier with a, um, a slip stitch. So you're gonna go in, yarn over, and then just continue to pull the yarn through the last loop. All right, and that is the slip stitch that's gonna finish off that last corner. So now here we grab our scissors. I leave a tail of about six inches cut the thread, slip it through the loop, and then cinch it up. And that's how you fasten off. Now let's grab our yarn needle. So for the yarn needle, I'm going to slip one of these tail ends through the needle eye. And then it's on this back side here. And I am just, because this is so multicolored, I'm just going to slip my needle underneath a couple of ridges. And I tend to want to go like a zigzag motion so that it makes it a little bit more difficult for this tail to work itself out while you're washing it and using it. I'm just going to weave in like an inch or so. Nothing super fancy. All 
All right, so I worked my way this way and kind of back and forth up and down this way. I think that's plenty of weaving in. I just cut it close to my project and there's that. Now we're gonna do the same thing to weave in the remaining tail end. All right, and once you're done with that, your washcloth is complete. All right, so there you have it. That is how you make my ribbed crochet dishcloth or washcloth. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching. Let me know what you thought about this project in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. In the description box below for you. N and I blanked. <laughs> but aside from this free video tutorial for my project, my project, a scrubbies or makeup removers, or you can make them larger if you like them bigger, you know, bigger than your hand for whatever use you're using them for. I'm talking too much.